I'm going to remove those by just dragging back there. I'm going to set my playhead at the start here. I'm going to play along, and then I'm going to play... I'm going to play straight in to the second half of the solo. And you'll see how this is going to work as we go. So if we hit the record button... How do I punch in a recording here in GarageBand? Because you don't really have any good recording options here. And what I've got here at the moment is I've got eight bars. And uh, say I've got this guitar solo here that I played on the Dublin Delay. What if I didn't like the second half of this, but I wanted to keep the first half? How do I punch in this guitar recording in an easy way? Well, I'm going to show you my method. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but I'll show you my method. First of all, let's come back here and just listen to this guitar solo, just so mostly so I can remind myself what it sounds like. It's like this. Yeah, so I don't like that second half so much, um, but but the first half was okay. So what, what do I do? If I just put myself here, I could hit record, yeah? But look what I have to do. I have to really quickly get onto the, get onto the guitar, and it's too hard to do that. Plus, I don't have my monitoring on. So let's fix that for starters. Uh, let's go in here to this one and turn monitoring on so... I can hear myself. Um, so yeah, so that's one way to do it. If, if you have a friend uh, that's nearby that can hit the record button for you and you can just be happy with the one bar count in like this, you could technically. Then you could just record over the top like that. But often you want a little bit more lead in time, yeah? We'll just come back out to here. So there you go, that's how it will look. So you have that cut in between them there and <laughs> and you do have to do some kajiggering to get that sounding right. We'll undo that one for now because the way that I do it, and let's bring our drums back in so we can actually hear our backing track so we can do this in time. The way I do this is to actually duplicate out this track. So we'll tap this one and then we'll hit the duplicate button. And then what I do is I just play over the top of this first one. So let's just say that I, I wanted the first four bars here and then I don't want the second four bars. I'm going to remove those by just dragging back there. I'm going to set my playhead at the start here. I'm going to play along, and then I'm going to play... I'm going to play straight in to the second half of the solo. And you'll see how this is going to work as we go. So if we hit the record button, here's our start. I think I was on the wrong track there, wasn't I? Let's go back to here. Uh, yep, trick for young players. So we'll undo that because I was on the wrong track. What you actually want to do is to be able to play along with that. So we're going to come to here, we're going to solo and do that one. That's going to be better. I was wondering why I wasn't hearing the original one. Take two, electric boogaloo. Better-ish. <laughs> All right, so now what have we got? Well, you're like, oh, we've, we've got two of the same there. Well, that's no good. But now we can actually mix and match this because now all we need to do is just drag this one up to the point where we want to cut it and then bring it back to our original track. And this way, you get to hear the original track. You can almost play along with the original track and then you're recording that second one. Now, you might notice here that when we play between these two, it's going to not sound great. And this is where we may need to do a little bit of an additional cut here. So if we play here. Oh, it's not bad at all. If that cut wasn't as, as crisp as you wanted it to be, then all you need to do is grab this handle and just move it. So it doesn't have to cut right on there. See how that note goes like that? You might want to do something like that. What would this sound like with that last note? Not bad, yeah? So you can do that. And if you want to do uh, absolute precise control, the more you zoom in, if you keep zooming, keep zooming, keep zooming, see how we've got that turn, snap to grid is turned off? And see how we've got that little nugget of stuff there? If we just go just before that and then bring this one just after that, then we're going to get a smoother transition. So let's come back out here and take a listen to this. 
not bad yet. And sometimes you might find, like in this case, I've recorded the second part a little bit quieter. Well, then you can just use your clip gain. Tap there, tap settings, and then grab your gain and maybe gain it up a couple of dB and then uh, bring it back in. So if we bring all this business back into our mix now and we put this back over on the, was this the right side that we wanted it? Pan it to the right. I think we had the other one on the left. Yep, there we go. Uh, let's bring this back in here with our new and improved solo, shall we? There you go. Uh, and of course, we'd remove that. Remove that endy bit with our crunk, 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 crunk. Uh, so there you go. That's the way that I manage uh, punching in in GarageBand. So being able to punch in halfway through. And of course, you can use the same thing for your keyboards, for your vocals, for whatever else you're doing in here. Um, just use the same methodology. Just create a second track, record onto that second track while overdubbing onto the first, and then just edit by moving it back to your original track. Uh, it's just so much easier than messing around and trying to quickly jump in or going over something. Because the problem is, if I wanted to do that same method here, but on this track, as soon as you hit record, it won't play this. So as soon as I hit record here, it's recording straight over that, and I'm not hearing it. I don't get to hear the original, which is not going to be cool for me. 